today we're looking at an idle air control valve. This is easy enough to test at home, so let me show you how to remove it from the vehicle and we can test it right on the bench. Now removing the valve is simple enough. We just have a throttle cable hookup, two fasteners right here, another two at the 11 and the 5 o'clock position, some hoses. These are coolant lines, so just make sure you place some uh, a rag on the bottom and then we can remove it from the vehicle. This is a locking nut, turn it back, same with this one, turn it back, all the way down. Then pull this out like this, this goes around just like that, and then we can put this to the side. Now the harness connector I already removed just because I want to show you this can be a little tricky sometimes. This is just a rubber boot that you need to push back. It does fight you a little bit. But on the bottom, right here, there's a tab. So this is facing down. That's why I wanted to show you this because you can't see it otherwise. But you press down on this tab and then pull off, pull on the body. Don't pull from the wiring, pull from the body. Now these are hose removal pliers. So you can twist and then remove the hose from the vehicle. Same with this one, but it's a little too close to the plenum. So I'm, I'm first going to remove the valve from the vehicle. Don't forget your rag. And we can pull this off. A little tough to get the camera at the right angle, but Hose pliers, going to twist and slowly remove this. There you go. So here's the valve from the vehicle. So now we have the valve on the bench and the first thing you want to do is take a look on the other side regarding any carbon buildup. In other words, if this is just caked with carbon, there's a little motor in here that turns this butterfly. And if this is just gunked up, this will not work correctly. So the first thing you want to do is just spray this down with carb cleaner, let it sit, clean it out, and then perform the next step, which you'll see in a moment. Now this isn't too bad. I'm going to clean this off camera right now, and I'll come right back. Okay, this looks a lot better. And in my case, I did not use carb clean. I simply use super clean. I tend to use this stuff over most because it's low order and it does an excellent job. But now we can go ahead and test the valve. Now most of you have cordless tools and you want a pack that pushes out 12 volts. So if you look at the pack here, we have a positive and a negative lead. We can use alligator clips and apply or transfer power from the pack directly to the valve. Now this pack is a little too much. It pushes out 20 volts and chances are it will not hurt the motor, but I don't want to overtax it if I don't have to. So this is an RC car battery pack. This pushes out 11 volts, so this is what I'll be using. And if you are curious on how to use a cordless battery pack, you'll need something like a paper clip, something maybe a little bit thicker, even a nail, for example. Place it into the prong of the positive lead and the negative lead, and to transfer the power, two alligator clips and just clamp on to the positive and the negative leads and that's it. Now these alligator wires I did purchase off Amazon and as always I'll have a link in the description box below if you're curious on the tools that, we'll, uh, that we're using today. But now this is ready to go. This pack is ready to transfer directly to the valve. Now take a look at the valve body. We have three terminals. Now I know the positive lead goes to the middle terminal. Now you'll see in a moment how I know that. But the positive lead goes to the right smack in the middle. The negative, you can do process of elimination. I know which one it is, which you'll see in a moment. But take a look, if I touch this left prong, you should hear and also see, in this case, the butterfly move here. But nothing is happening. But if I touch this terminal, and let me do this so you guys can actually see this. Hold on. 
Okay, now watch right here. See how that moves? It's not a lot. Don't forget, this is an idle air control valve. That, that's You don't need a lot of movement here. And in fact, what I'll do is include a link of an idle air control valve I did six or seven years ago on a Maxima. Different design, but same concept. You'll see the valve move back and forth when you apply power. And this is how you can quickly test one of these valves to see if it's working correctly. Now if you do this test and nothing is happening here regarding any movement of the valve, then you'll need to replace the assembly. But do this test and clean it out first because these are not inexpensive. And always purchase the factory part. So in this case it's a Denso part made in Japan. Do not go after market. It will not last you nearly as long as the factory components. Now let's say you do this test and it's working correctly but you have a trouble code. That means most likely you have a wiring issue. Let's check that out. So if you do have a trouble code but the valve is working correctly, let's verify that the wiring is in good shape. So to do that we need a digital multimeter. These are inexpensive again, $25 off Amazon and we want the volts DC setting. And the other thing I'll be using is a test probe. Now you can substitute this with a paper clip because we need to insert it into the harness connector. But this, take my word for it, this makes the job a lot easier and once again purchased off Amazon. If you're curious, I'll have a link for that below. So let's just do this by process of elimination. Right here is the harness connector for the idle air control valve. Let's just insert this, the probe, into the first terminal. Again, you can use a paper clip but this makes, makes it a little bit easier. Okay, so this is ready to go. And just so you have a better view of what's going on, so this is going directly to the positive lead of the multimeter. Black is ground. A good ground in my case is right here for the throttle. Another could be the exhaust manifold, which is right over here in the vehicle. But now what we're going to do is turn on the ignition key. We're not starting the car, just turn the key and we should see battery voltage on the meter. And as you can see, we have no reading here. This is a millivolt reading, three millivolts. So just ignore that. You need a true volt reading, not a millivolt. So now I'm just removing the connector from the first terminal and going into the second terminal. And now we have 11.4 volts on the multimeter. So that tells us, there we go, that we are getting battery voltage. And this is how I knew earlier that that center terminal was the positive lead. Very, very easy. Now if you check all three terminals and you do not see battery voltage, that means you have a break in the wiring from this harness connector to the vehicle's main relay. Now there is a tool that will find any shorts, any breaks in the wiring, and it's a little expensive, maybe 150 bucks or so, but it will save you a lifetime trying to find any of these shorts or breaks in the wiring. Now if you do this test, the idle air control valve is good, you are getting power at the harness connector, the last thing to see is that you have good ground. In other words, you have a good connection to the vehicle's computer. So on the multimeter, once again, you want continuity. That looks like a Wi-Fi hotspot, okay? Now what that means, continuity, is that two points make a connection and we'll hear an audible alert. So I still have my ground, as you can see, and just grab, let me zoom you in here. Okay, so we want to hear an audible alert. Again, process of elimination. We know that it's not the center terminal. Let's try this guy. Okay, nothing. Let's try this guy. And there you go. So you also want to check for ground. Now once you reinstall the part, start the vehicle and turn on the AC. And just let the vehicle sit for a good 10 to 15 minutes. This will expedite the idle learn procedure. Uh, if you just go for a drive, then you'll find the idle it won't be where it should be. And it's going to take the computer some time to recalibrate everything. But if you turn on the AC, it sort of expedites that. Let the car sit, and you'll be in good shape. As always, I hope this helps a number of you out there, and thank you for watching.